Hey, welcome everybody to another tutorial. Today I was doing a little bit of HTTP requests on APIs. There is a nice API out there that gives me the price of cryptocurrency live. So I decided to use that and create myself a very small, just a small app in Unity. I'm just trying out HTTP requests so I could see the price live as they update. Now, not a perfect app, but as you'll see in a moment, I do get data. So I know that Ethereum is now at 435 and Bitcoin is at 9.8 thousand. So now pulling an API is nothing new. It's nothing super magical, especially if you're doing it in web. Um, but today we'll be showing you how to do it in Unity, instead of Unity. And you might argue that it is not the best place to do those kind of application. And I would say, yeah, you're totally right, but it's still good to know how to do it inside of Unity as well. I will be using an API called the Riot API, the one we use in League of Legends because I have one of my friends that is trying to use that on his end and he's also using Unity. So I'll be showing him how to do that through that video right here. So I will be showing you how to do a normal GET request and also a POST request. And we'll also go into showing how to modify your header. So you could have some custom headers in there and uh, pass him your username or pass your API key or pass your password either through POST or custom headers. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right. So we are in Unity at the moment. We have an object under our canvas that is called request, which is just a normal button, and then a text field that is taking the whole screen. Now what I will be doing is I will go ahead and create a new C Sharp script. I'll call it something like API, and we are going to start coding something. So when we press on the request button, it is going to print out the response in the response with our script open, we're going to lay down the basic fields we're going to need. So let's start by doing a simple request on the Google website. So something public, something that does not require anything but a single get request. So it's going to be the same as going on your browser and typing in google.com. All right, so we're going to start with a private const string. That's going to be the URL. And let's say we're going to go on google.ca or google.com, whatever you feel like. Now, what we're going to do right here is create a public function called requests, and we make it public because I'm going to link my button to it. Okay, now to create a simple request to, um, to google.com without having any post parameter, without having any different header, all we really have to do is create a new www object. I will just call requests and say it's equal to a new object. And that one uh, takes in the URL, just like this. Now, just creating the request like this is gonna be the very first step, so we've completed that. However, the second step is to wait and actually uh, receive the response, because if you do something here with requests, say request.txt is gonna be equal to, actually, no, um, you're using request.txt somewhere, maybe in a debug.log, that is not going to work simply because it didn't have the time to receive the message yet. So this is not possible because you're checking in the same exact frame for the response which you don't have. Now there is a couple of ways to go about it. I will show you what Unity does on the reference. They have a item rater and they do a yelled return. So what happens when that object first gets enabled, they do the request, they create it, and then they wait for a result and as long as the result is not met, they are not going to keep on going with this. Uh, they're going to run some other code, maybe in an update, and so on. So that's how they do it. They do it all in the same. I like to actually split them apart because it gives me a little bit more um, room to organize. So what I like to do, create a private enumerator on response, and just send in my request here. And now you have to start a coroutine with on response. Of course, you send in your requests. And by doing this, I am now able to actually um, wait until this is called. Actually, this is going to be called uh, fast enough. I forgot my yell the return in here. So yell return the request. Let's actually give it a try by hooking up our text field in here. So I'll quickly do that. This is just, of course, so we can see the response in the game. We could have done a debug.log, that would have been really simple. But I'm going to do it directly in the text. I'll say response text.txt is going to be equal to request.txt. And this way, as soon as I create this object, 
link my script and then link the response text, we are going to be able to see the response from my request directly in this room. Okay. Oh, and I did forget to actually hook up my button. So let me go under request, which is my button, put the new object in here and just hook myself to the public avoid request function. All right, so we're going to boot up the game, click on requests, and you'll see it really doesn't take that long. We see Google's code, Google's code for google.com, or actually google.ca. If we were to point this somewhere else, say my own personal website, it is going to be different. So let's write this out. And here is the code running on my website right now. Now printing your whole browser page is not really that useful. It's not really something we do. What we tend to do instead is print, not print, but use responses from APIs. So we can create some nice application around other application that, you know, already run. So for the next example, we're going to use a real world API and do a little bit of change. So instead of just doing a normal get request, like we do, um, like you would just enter the URL of your website in your browser, we're going to do something more. So we're going to be sending some post parameter as well. Uh, something you do when you log in, say to Google or when you log into Facebook, you send in post parameter as well. So you send in your username and your password, but they're not up there in the link. They're not in any get parameter. So you don't see something like this happening. What you see instead is the, the clean link just like this. And then beneath what's going on is that they do send, uh, your username and password information. So we will actually go on and do that by having a look at the real API. In this case, I've chose the Riot API because I just feel like it is a very good example. I went ahead and I generated a new key that expires tomorrow. So you can't actually steal that actually expire later tonight. I'm going to copy this over and make sure we actually put it somewhere here. So I'll change my, actually I'll create a new string, call it API key. And I'm just going to paste mine in here and we'll learn how to pass this both as a post parameter and also as a header. So having a look at this API right here, we're going to go and grab the first one we can maybe champion mastery or let's go ahead and grab champion. And we're going to take the call that retrieves all the champion. Now, of course, this depends on what kind of API you're running on somewhere on your API page, you'll be able to find a endpoint. So I'll do an execute request right here. They're going to do a API request um, on themselves just to show me how it looks like. And that is the link we get. So if we go ahead and um, actually do the same as they did, you're going to find out that we have the information that we would need. So this could actually work. If we were to go ahead, put that at the top here and press on play, then press on request we actually get all the information we need. So this champion ID 266 is actually active. Uh, it's not free to play and so on. So we do get the information, but sometimes actually all the time, the API key is going to change. So this link right here, this is what would stay static all the time. Uh, if you're always querying on North America one. So this is something really specific to uh, Riot Games API, but assume that this one is your endpoint. And then the rest are just parameters that you can decide to do to change. So here we check, do we want this to be free to play? We say no. Then the, the only important one really is just the API key. So this one might change all the time. So let's take this. That's the static endpoint. We are going to replace all of this by the static endpoint. And we're going to say that is the champion endpoint. So we saw it's very, very simple. If you want to do something um, on this very specific API, you can use get requests. All you would have to do is replace URL by the champion endpoint and then uh, whatever the key was. So it was API underscore key, which is also going to remain static all the time. And then your API key, which changes. So we've seen this It's the same exact thing that we just done. Um, and we're not really interested in this. We'd like to be a little bit more secure and send our API key through headers, which is a little bit more complex. So we're going to go ahead and do that. This stays the same all the time. And Riot also gives us a nice little 
um, thing here, which is why I chose them. They also give you like a preview of what happens if you do a request in the header. So it stays the same. You do have the free to play parameter you can change, but instead of having your API key um, in the URL or in the post parameter, you now have it in the headers. And this is what we're about to do. And we're going to keep this request. However, we're going to need something more on top of that. We're going to need something called the triple W form. And we'll just call it form instantiated to a new object. And this form will be um, given out at the same time as we give out the URL. So once we construct our object, you're going to see that it requests a form. So we might as well send it there. Okay. All right, now for these header, we're going to declare a dictionary because the header is basically just two string. One of them is the key and the other one is the value. We're going to say header is going to be equal to form dot headers. So it's going to take the existing one that currently have uh, you know, their values. So it's going to take the existing one from triple W form and then we can actually add some more. So we can say header at hello Mike is equal to hello and that would be actually added in the call and this is not single quote so that would actually add on to the header so you could see it right here now depending on where you send your requests maybe your custom header you just put doesn't really work it's not accepted um, in this case we're gonna use the one they give us it's called x riot token and that would be your api key so let's go ahead and take this x riot token you would see it sometime on another website as the um, authentication or authorization header. It really doesn't matter. It depends on what their website accepts. In this case, it is the X Riot token, and the token we send is the API key. Okay. Now um, we are actually going to push that inside of the triple W request. So we're going to say champion endpoint, and then you can't actually send just if I move that I can't send my form if I just do that um, it's not going to include my header so I have to say this one is null and then I send in my header so there is another overload if we have a look right here it takes in the ash table header or a dictionary string string header this is what we're using right now and the byte post data we're gonna see that very very soon but let's give this one a try so we're using headers to pass in our API key. Remember, we're not actually calling this. Like if you see here, the API key is not in the link, so it's hidden beneath it. And we get the same response. Now I'd like you to see what happens if we have say a wrong API key. So something that does not work. If you guys enjoy, make sure you drop a like, uh, subscribe, let me know what to do next. And also join us on Discord. I will see you guys there. API key so I'm actually doing that um, as myself my League of Legends account is actually making that call on my behalf all right so it's starting to get fairly cool um, what I would tend to do is explain uh, post after explaining get but in this very tutorial I'm doing things in a different order um, simply because we only have to add a little bit of code to this to add post parameters so we said earlier um, that we if we send a username or a password to a website this is not directly in the link so this is not as a get parameter it could be as a post parameter though and it could also be as a header I don't don't get me wrong you could also do that as a header if you want but in case you want to do it as a post you would have to send it in here if you guys remember this parameter was called post data and it's a um, it's a, a byte array so if you want to add up to it this is what you have to do form add field and then you had the field. So what's the name of the thing? Could be username and then the value of it. So Mike 180, 1887, that would be the value. And after doing this, well, this is your triple W form. So this is not, this is basically not a, a byte array. So what you have to do, byte array, raw form data is equal to form dot data. And then you would be able to actually pass this in just like this. Now, since we're actually sending a post parameter this time, the triple W object is going to detect that manually 
and give us a post request so what you're going to be doing right now on your API what you're sending is not a get request with headers it's actually a post request with headers in this very specific case with the Riot API um, they don't take that they don't take post parameters so they don't want to see that uh, which is why they return us something like method is not allowed so you're not allowed to use post call so here it has to be null this is actually taken from the documentation in Unity. I did not know that until today, so that was a fairly good thing to read about. And that's actually how we created a request, a normal request, our normal get request. We did that on google.ca. Then we did a request with our custom header on the Riot Games API. And then we did another request with a post parameter, again, on the same exact link. I hope this was useful to you guys. You can use this wherever you want, any API out there. Uh, OpenStreet, I remember using that to create my small Pokemon Go clone. I'm also using it right now for Crypto Compare to look at the price of cryptocurrency live. So you can do that pretty much everywhere you want. You could even try and create a browser directly in Unity. Not that it would be smart and not that it would be required, but you know that's, that's possible if you get response from outside this shell.